Welcome to the deep dive. Okay, so today we're jumping straight into something uh, pretty big from the Large Hedron Collider. Yeah, something genuinely uh, jaw-dropping. Scientists there have just announced this discovery with top quarks. Right, and they're saying it could well shock the world, which mm -hmm. points to how significant this might be for understanding the universe's you know, earliest moment. Exactly. It's not every day you get a whole new angle on the first microsecond after the Big Bang. Uh -huh. And this detection of top quark pairs in lead ion collisions. Well, that's what it seems to be. Absolutely. So our mission today, let's make it laser focused. We need to understand why this specific observation is causing such a stir. Mm -hmm. We'll be digging into a NASA Space News video transcript that details the findings. We want to explore what happened, you know, deep underground at CERN. Why it's such a big deal. What it really tells us about the universe right at the start. And how it might actually shift our view of fundamental physics. Yeah, exactly. So let's get right to it. What did the scientists actually see? Okay, so at its core, the discovery is this. They detected a top quark and its antimatter twin, an anti-top quark. Okay. And these appeared right after smashing lead atoms together with incredible energy inside the LHC. Lead atoms. So heavy ions. Right. And the really groundbreaking part, this specific pair, top and anti-top, has never been seen before in this kind of collision, a heavy ion collision lead on lead. And that detail, the heavy ion collision, that's really the crux of it, isn't it? It's like, not just any old particle smash up. That's precisely the key, yeah. These lead on lead collisions, they are the most energy dense events we've ever managed to create and study. Wow. They, for a fleeting moment, recreate the kind of extreme heat and density we think existed just moments after the Big Bang. Like a tiny Big Bang in the lab? Sort of, yeah. Yeah. And finding these top quark pairs within that incredibly energetic soup, uh -huh. the strong evidence suggesting that all six quark flavors were actually there in that primordial state. The quark gluon plasma. Exactly, the quark gluon plasma. Yeah. All six quarks, and as you likely know, that's the whole family. Up, down, charm, strange, top, bottom. The fact that even the top quark, the real heavyweight, was there, that's a crucial piece of this puzzle. It really is. Okay, so these lead collisions pack a phenomenal punch, energy-wise. But why the focus on top quarks specifically? What makes them so special in this context? Well, a few things. First, top quarks are just massive. They're the titans of the elementary particle world. Right. The video transcript notes their mass is roughly the same as a gold atom, which is just astounding for a particle we consider fundamental. A single quark weighs as much as an atom. That's wild. It is. And second, they're lifespan. It's unbelievably short. We're talking something like 10 to the minus 25 seconds. Okay, that number, it, it's hard to even conceptualize. How fast is that? It's faster than light can even cross a single proton. Whoa, okay. So if they vanish that quickly, how on earth did they detect them? You can't directly see something that fleeting, surely. No, no, not directly. The ATLA's team at the LHC, they had to be clever. They looked for the unmistakable leftovers, the decay products. Oh, the evidence trail. Exactly. They focused on what's called the Deleptin Decay Channel. Basically, each top quark transforms almost instantly. In that 10, 25 seconds. Right, into a bottom quark and a W boson. That's a fundamental force carrier particle. Okay. And then that W boson breaks down further into a neutrino and either an electron or a muon. Those are leptons. So it's like following a trail of breadcrumbs. But the breadcrumbs appear and disappear in fractions of a second. The electrons and muons, those are the things they actually measure. You've got it. And this specific sequence of decays, top to bottom and W, then W to leptin and neutrino, it creates a very distinct signature. Something they could pick out from all the other chaos. Precisely. Amidst the you know absolute storm of other particles flying around in these lead collisions, they could isolate this pattern. And they did it with remarkable precision. They reached a 5.03 sigma significance. 5.03 sigma. Now, in particle physics, that sounds definitive. What does that mean in practical terms? Less guessing, more knowing. It means the chance of this being just a random blip, a statistical fluke, is less than one in a million. Wow. Less than one in a million. Yeah. That level of certainty, five sigma, is the gold standard. It's what physicists require to officially claim a discovery. So this isn't just a hint, it's a confirmed observation. That's genuinely mind-blowing. Okay, the transcript mentioned they had seen top quark pairs before, but in proton-lead collisions. What makes this lead-lead observation so different? Why is it more significant? It's all about the environment, the conditions created, 
Proton lead collisions, energetic, yes. Mm -hmm. But lead lead collisions are, well, they're a whole different beast. More extreme. Much more extreme. They generate this stuff called quark gluon plasma, QGP. We mentioned that earlier, the primordial soup state. Exactly. It's a state where quarks and gluons, which are normally locked up tight inside protons and neutrons, get liberated. They become unbound, move freely. Like melting the protons and neutrons themselves. This is a decent analogy, yeah. yeah. It's a condition far closer to what the universe was like in its very first moments compared to a proton lead collision. Okay. So detecting top quarks within that incredibly dense, hot, chaotic QGP environment, mm -hmm. that's a massive technical achievement. It really shows how far our detectors and analysis techniques have come. So these lid collisions are the closest we can get to making a micro Big Bang, and that creates the QGP. Let's, uh, let's delve a bit deeper into that. What is QGP exactly, and why is this link to the early universe so vital? Right, so think about normal matter. Quarks and gluons are confined, stuck together. Mm -hmm. But if you crank up the temperature to, well, absurd levels over two trillion degrees Celsius. Two trillion. As you get in these lead collisions, those bonds just dissolve. The quarks and gluons break free. They form this incredibly dense sort of fluid-like soup. That's the QGP. And the theory is? The theory is that the entire universe was in this QGP state for about the first microsecond after the Big Bang. Just one microsecond. But a crucial one. As the universe then expanded and cooled rapidly, this QGP went through a phase transition. It's called hadronization. Hadronization. Yeah, where the quarks and gluons bound together again to form the stable particles, like protons and neutrons, that make up everything we see today. Okay, so QGP is the raw material from which everything eventually uh, condensed, basically. Essentially, yes. So where do the top quarks fit into probing that state? Ah, this is where it gets really interesting. Because top quarks are so incredibly short-lived, remember. 10 to the minus 25 seconds, still boggling my mind. Right. They actually decay even faster than the QGP itself fully forms and settles down. The QGP takes maybe 10 to the minus 23 seconds to form. Wait, so the top quarks decay before the QGP is even properly established? They are born and die during the very earliest, most dynamic moments of the QGP's existence. They are probing the plasma practically as it's being created. Wow, so they're like super fast reporters sending back a snapshot from the instant the soup started cooking. That's a great way to put it. This new observation confirms that even these incredibly heavy, incredibly fleeting particles can be produced in these QGP creating conditions. Which strongly supports the idea that that all six quark flavors, up, down, strange, charm, bottom and top, were indeed present in that primordial plasma. Okay, so they weren't just present theoretically, they were actively being created and destroyed within this environment we're recreating. Precisely. And it gets better. Each quark flavor interacts a bit differently with the QGP. They have different masses, different properties. Right. So studying the top quark alongside the others, like charm quarks, which you know were detected in heavy ion collisions back in 2020, gives us a more complete picture, a multi-dimensional view. So by looking at how the top quarks specifically form and decay in there, we can start to deduce key properties of the QGP itself, things like its exact temperature, its density, even its viscosity, how sticky it is. And those details help us refine our models of the Big Bang. Absolutely. These are crucial clues. It's like using these fundamental particles as incredibly sensitive thermometers and barometers for the universe's first moment. That's a really powerful image, thermometers for the Big Bang. Now, this discovery, huge as it is, it didn't just, you know, pop out of nowhere, right? There's a history here. Oh, definitely. It builds on decades of work. The whole idea of quarks was only proposed back in, what, 1964? Right, Gilman and Zweig. And it took ages to find evidence for all of them. The top quark itself wasn't found until 1995 at Fermilab near Chicago. And even that discovery, I remember, wasn't direct. No, just like now, it relied on detecting the decay products. And it also needed that same five sigma certainty level to be confirmed. So there's a nice parallel there. Almost 30 years later, we're confirming its presence in a completely different, much more extreme environment. Exactly. It's been this long, fascinating journey of understanding these building blocks. And now we're taking that next big step, studying the heaviest one in conditions that mimic the dawn of time. The transcript also mentions some other key milestones on the way. How does this fit into that broader picture? Yeah, it connects nicely. Back in 2005, experiments at RHIC, that's the collider in the US. Brookhaven. Right, Brookhaven. They showed something surprising about QGP. It acts less like a gas and more like a nearly perfect liquid, very low viscosity, almost no internal friction. 
Which wasn't expected, was it? <laughs> Not really, no. Then later, the ALICE experiment at CERN found that even smaller collisions, like energetic protons, proton ones, could sometimes create tiny pockets of QGP-like stuff. So it wasn't just confined to the biggest collisions? It seems not. And then, as we mentioned, 2020 saw the detection of charm quarks in heavy ion collisions. Another heavier quark confirmed in the mix. So its discovery is like adding a piece to this giant cosmic jigsaw puzzle. That's a perfect analogy. Each one gives us a richer, more detailed picture of how matter behaves under these truly extreme conditions. And the top quark, being the absolute heaviest and having that unique, super short lifespan, it fills a really critical gap, doesn't it, in understanding the whole spectrum? Precisely. You need to understand the behavior across the full range of quark masses and lifetimes, from the light-up quark to this massive top quark, to really grasp what that primordial soup was like. And how the fundamental forces were operating back then. Exactly. It's honestly a testament to how far our technology has advanced. We've gone from just inferring these particles exist to recreating early universe conditions and now detecting particles that live for just 10, 25 seconds within those conditions. It's incredible. The ATLA's team's quote seems spot on. Yeah, they said, this discovery paves the way for further studies of the quark gluon plasma and the physics of the early universe with top quarks. It really does open new doors. The quest to understand where we came from, our origins, it just took another significant leap forward. A big leap, yes. So let's try and wrap this up. What's the core message, the main takeaway from this deep dive today? I think the key takeaway is this. Detecting top quark pairs in these intense lead ion collisions at the LHC gives us vital, new, direct evidence about the state of matter in the universe's very first microseconds. It's not just theory anymore. Right. It strongly confirms that all six types of quarks were swimming around in that primordial quark gluon plasma. And crucially, it gives us a new powerful tool, the top quark itself, to probe that extreme state of matter with more precision than ever before. It really is amazing recreating the dawn of time underground to figure out the universe's most basic secrets. Okay, on that note, here's a final thought for you, our listeners, to chew on. Mm. Think about this connection. How does recreating these incredibly hot, dense conditions from the universe's first moments help us understand both the vastness of the cosmos and the tiniest building blocks of matter? Where else in science might we find these kinds of unexpected links, where studying one extreme reveals fundamental truths about another, seemingly completely different scale? That's a great question to ponder. Indeed. Until our next deep dive, keep contemplating the cosmos.